Hello and welcome to another Aston Originals podcast from Aston History. I am Dr. Brian Sudlow, a lecturer in history, and I'm joined today by my colleague, Dr. Ilaria Scalia, senior lecturer in modern history. Ilaria, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, in this podcast, we're going to talk about a paper that Ilaria is going to be giving to the Royal College of Nursing on the 20th of July. The, uh, the talk will be called Medicine, Politics, Emotions, Historical Reflections on Pandemics in the 1920s. That's next Thursday, 20th of July, 5.30 to 7 p.m. And we'll be sharing links uh, with you so that you can uh, sign up for that uh, event. But this is just a, a taster. It's just to uh, um, uh, to ask Ilaria exactly what this talk is going to be about, the kind of topics that it's going to engage with. So, Ilaria, uh, let's be honest about this as historians. Um, uh, medicine, uh, pandemics, healthcare, a lot of people would just say, well, these things are about science, at best they're about medical technologies. What on earth has history got to do with any of these topics? Well, First of all, my first answer would be they have a long history, all of these things you mentioned, science, medicines, and we might learn something by looking at what happened last time we were dealing with the same issues. But also people don't exist in isolation. They're not just a system of organs. They think, they have cultures, they exist in societies, they exist in state, they're in, in states, they're influenced by politics. And so uh, it's very important, I think, to, to understand all of these different aspects in the past and in the present. I think, you know, the COVID pandemic showed the complexity of all of this uh, in an even greater detail and perhaps uh, vividness than before. Okay. And and um, look, uh, of course, I agree with you completely. Complexity, this is, is one of the things that I tell the, stu the students. Uh, history is the study of the complexity of situations and the complexity of things uh, and, and people over over time. So, um, in fact, medical care is a complex thing. It has this medical scientific angle. It also has this human angle. So what exactly are you going to talk about in your, in your paper? So my paper is going to be based actually on a book that I've written before the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, our pandemic. Uh, it was published. It's called The Emotions of Internationalism. And uh, it was published in December 2019. In two chapters uh, of this book, which deals with the history of international cooperation, actually dealt with tuberculosis and uh, um, international sanatoria. These were clinics um, to treat tuberculosis that had uh, been set up in the, in the 1920s. Never I thought when I was researching this book, when I was writing this book, that I would get to actually live through uh, some of the scenarios that uh, I studied back then, that I would get to use terms like pandemic or quarantine and these kind of things that I become familiar with in my research in, in my life, in my families, in my professional lives. And so in the midst of the pandemic, our pandemic, very frustrated about not being able to do anything uh, immediate in terms of uh, providing medical care, like the nurses that we'll be uh, talking to or the people in the College of Nursing and in all capacities that we'll be talking to, I couldn't buy help people the same way they could. But I did have plenty of time to reflect about similarities between the past and the present. Uh, what is that um, perhaps I thought that would have come in handy if he had been better known. Uh, and so uh, I thought that maybe my way to do my bit would be to share that, to see what from a historical perspective um, we, can, we can use to improve the present and the future. So <clears throat> in fact, this is, this is an important point, isn't it, that um, medicine develops we have new innovations within the medical field within the field of uh, i guess practice and treatments and so on. but at the same time there are certain kind of continuities there are certain things that are um that are always going to be true about about human healthcare, and therefore medical histories can give us actionable insights for medical practitioners today Yes, and it's not just medical history, but also social history, political history, that all together can really inform how we, we understand that. So um, in my case, you know, first of all, I don't want to overplay the continuities because, you know, it was a, bit, a different time in the 1920s. 
you know, antibiotics were not introduced until the 1950s. So in the 1920s, many of the treatments were, were you know, completely different from today. Life expectation was very different. Uh, tuberculosis was a very different disease. It targeted young people. They've been around for a long time. So I don't want to now overplay continuities. But uh, I did notice um, many frameworks that haven't changed. The fact that uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, as we know it, in the end was handled by nation state, was a direct consequence of many decisions that had been made to deal with tuberculosis 100 years ago, to set up an international system with states ultimately in charge um, of deciding health policy. And so the reason why uh, it made a difference to be in England, in France, or uh, somewhere else during the COVID-19 pandemic can be traced directly if we were wondering, uh, for instance, why. But even differences can be helpful, I think. There were many things that we left behind as medicine evolved that now we might want to consider perhaps bringing back maybe in an adapted form. And so um, looking at the past, even when we find it very different, can really inform um, different ways in which we can look uh, at the future without always assuming that this was always going better. <laughs> Sometimes we have things that are worth bringing back. Absolutely. Now, um, in your in your paper, you also talk about the case of the Lisa Sanatorium, won't you? Um, so, I, I wonder if you could just say you know, what was the Lisa Sanatorium, and why why is it a helpful context in in which to uh, tell this story? So, Lisa is is the name of a, of a relatively small uh, village up in the Swiss Alps. And the reason why I decided to study it is because uh, in the 1920s and even slightly before that, it had established itself as a destination for uh, people who were uh, in need of treatment for tuberculosis. And they didn't just have one sanatorium, they had dozens. So thousands of people went up there from different parts of the world. And I decided to focus on two for my research, uh, which were international in scope. And that's why I decided to take them into account. But why would someone in England today care about some sanatorium up in the Swiss Alps? Is because I think it can be helpful to remember that there was a time when in England and elsewhere, people thought that any solution um, to a disease, any form of healing, would not be confined to the human body, but would have to be connected with a societal healing, a national healing, and an international healing. And so one of the those moments that really you know, made me reflect, you know, maybe, maybe the story should be retold or told for the first time in this generation, is that um, back then, you know, because the First World War had just ended, people just assumed that you cannot just simply heal a disease, but of course that's going to have a consequence in terms of national and international policy. There are ways to treat diseases that are going to facilitate peace, and we should choose those. And instead there are others that can divide nations uh, from one another that can create conflict and we should um, be careful to prevent the dynamic from taking place. That was something that people back in the 1920s worried about a lot and something that was mentioned very rarely instead in our pandemic in, in uh, the 2020s and perhaps we're still dealing with the, conf you know, with the consequences. I suppose an, another difference between uh, Les Saints and uh, let's say the COVID pandemic is is during the COVID pandemic, of course, people kept away from one another, whereas mm -hmm. Les Saints, that sanatorium in the Alps, is almost like a, a town square for, 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 for European elites, isn't it? Uh, there are people coming yes. to Les Saints from, from, uh, from all corners. So that was a, a major difference between uh, tuberculosis and medical treatment back then and today. So uh, back then with tuberculosis, uh, one of the first steps that people would take would be to leave their families and whatever town they were in, their co-workers, and go somewhere else for treatment. So being quarantined back then often meant literally going to a different location uh, where only sick people uh, would, be, would be. And so um, this element of isolation uh, constituted a big part of the experience of being ill. And sometimes quarantine lasted for months, for years even. So that's another big difference with, uh, with you know, our pandemic when instead we were dealing with they feel we were all counting how many days we still had to do. We weren't thinking in terms of months. But then again, because people had to go somewhere else, by definition, they would encounter other people that they never met before. And in the particular establishments I studied, these other people came from different countries. And so they did end up 
in a Times Square, like you so beautifully uh, uh, defined it, um, that otherwise they would not have experienced. And something that really struck me was how that was intentional. That was not something that just happened by chance. That was made happen by a group of people who, again, after the First World War, and after having experienced how divisive disease can be, how divisive all different matters of, of human conduct and experience can be, in trying absolutely to avoid another war, they thought, you know, in the moment in which we have to deal with a disease, we should make it a point to do so in such a way that people meet for people from different countries. They can feel that they have something in common that in the end, often young people, all dealing with a similar issue, they're fighting the same battle, so to speak. And so they should, they shouldn't, they should not look at each other as enemies, but instead they should use this opportunity to, to grow united with one another. Now we can call this rhetoric, we can call this fluff and whatever else, but uh, when we look, and, and I do this in detail in the book and, and in the talk, uh, when we look at the kind of things that they did, the institutions they established, you know, the study abroad programs as we know them came from things like this. You know, many of the structures that now we take for granted derive from their actions. Perhaps uh, we, we shouldn't scoff them that uh, quickly. And certainly I was struck by how during our pandemic instead, we didn't really much talk about we should try to build peace. Instead, if anything, we saw political divisions or other kind of divisions arising without ever thinking we should use this as an opportunity to get better, to become better, to live together with one another peacefully. Ilaria, I think that's a really intriguing question on, uh, on which to leave things. Thank you very much for joining us. So Dr. Ilaria Scalia's paper, uh, which is being hosted by the Royal College of Nursing, will be uh, next Thursday, 20th of July, 5.30 to 7 p.m. We'll put a link below this video so you can uh, sign up for that talk. Ilaria, good luck with that talk. I hope it goes well. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And we'll see you again on another Aston Originals podcast with Aston History very soon. Well, thank you very much and goodbye.